everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. We are going to start back in on the midi dress from Samantha the American Girl doll today and I am starting off right where I left off. So the first thing that I'm going to do on this project is I am going to do the sleeves. Now the pattern that I'm going to be using as the base for my sleeves is Simplicity 8160. It is a sailor blouse and specifically I'm going to be doing the long sleeves of the middle one because Samantha also has long sleeves and it looks like the pattern should be pretty similar. I think the main differences are that this one is gathered into the wrist whereas Samantha's are pleated so that should be an easy change and also I did already note to you guys last time that the rise of the shoulder in this sleeve looks very very tall and narrow so I am going to spread that out a little bit. It is a fitted sleeve so it should be relatively narrow but it this one just looks a little bit off so hopefully spreading it out will work I am gonna do a mock-up because even though I have a lot of twill I just don't want to waste it I would rather use like a cotton sheet so I'm gonna do a mock-up of this sleeve and see how it goes and hopefully it will work well enough that I can just cut it out in the twill these are gonna be unlined sleeves so it's just one layer of cotton twill but hopefully they'll be pretty easy to put together they will go into a cuff at the bottom and uh, Let's see how it goes. I also wanted to show you that I did get a wig for Samantha. This is the one that I settled on. I actually ordered three from Amazon and all three were like almost identical, even though they were different sellers, different looks online, different pictures, etc. But the one that was the same brand as the Kirsten wig actually wound up being identical to this, except really, really shiny, like it looked plasticky, which my Kirsten wig did not at all. So luckily this one came in exactly the same style length etc like the same waves the same layering everything but was literally just a lot less shiny hopefully that shows on camera it's a little bit more red and a little bit darker than what I would want because like this is my Sam that I'm planning to bring with me to the con and you can see like her hair is just a little bit off from this like a little bit lighter a little bit less I feel like it's less red but I think it's showing up actually the same red on camera but it is a little bit lighter but overall, I think this was the best wig. The third one that came in was a little shiny and also it was a few inches shorter than this. And I do think that this is the right length because this is going down like pretty much to my waist nearly, which is what hers does as well. So I like this length. I think it's going to work really well. And of course, I'll have the tam on top too because we'll be making that this week. This isn't even pinned on right now or anything. I literally just like brush the bangs a little bit and my hair isn't put into pin curls. It's in a bun. So I think that's why it looks a little lumpy, <laughs> but I will do proper wig, you know, wearing when I actually wear this for real and not just plopping this on my head to try it out. But it's funny because this is actually pretty much my natural color. Just FYI, I am not a natural redhead. <laughs> If you can't tell by all of the different shades of red that my hair is throughout all of my videos, it changes all the time. Yeah, that's because my hair is naturally dark brown. So here we are. Never had bangs like this, but I'm back to my original color temporarily. Now back to sleeves. So I'm working on the sleeve mock-up and I just realized that I made a stupid, super rookie mistake that I like don't even know how I did because I measured the outside of the sleeve like along this way of the sleeve pattern and was like okay I need to add 0.75 inches and we're golden. I did not measure the inside of the sleeve where the seam is so what I'm winding up with here is like right now this sleeve is hitting where it should hit but if you notice this one is inches like three inches from my armpit like something I mean like if I pulled this up to fit in my armpit A it's also too small, so that's great. I obviously have to add even more up there, but also, can we talk about this? So, you know how I mentioned that the sleeve looked really like tall and narrow on top? Well, this is what it's turned into, why it looks tall and narrow and why this dimension worked and this one completely didn't. So obviously I have to start from scratch, which is too bad because of course I did decide to cut this in twill thinking, oh yeah, you know what? I think there's a good chance that this would actually work. No, it doesn't work. So let's try again. Okay, this time I did not mock it up out of the actual fabric. I used a sheet and I think that we are pretty close. I actually wound up taking an inch and a half of length 
off of the top here, like the rise of the top of the sleeve, I took that height out, like about an inch and a half, and I actually added that five and a half inches that I had written in on that pattern at some point to add to the bottom. Now that said, it's too much. Because I'm doing the cuff, it is too much length on the bottom, so I will be removing some of it because it really it should hit probably about here. So like, what is that, two and a half maybe inches up from here? So I will be removing some of that. I also, still torn on whether I need more right here. Obviously right now I am wearing a short sleeve dress, so I have that little bit of a short sleeve underneath there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and set this into the dress and see how that goes. Maybe I'll cut off the length first. Nah, I'll just set it into the dress and see how this goes as is, and then I'll obviously I'll try it on without the dress on underneath and see if just removing the short sleeve bulk will help. I do think that it's maybe a little too loosey goosey down here. I mean, mine will, so first off, it will be shorter. And then these pleats that are right here, right now I just based it over the edge of the pleats, but I will actually be stitching the pleats down for probably about this far. And then that would be, you know, up here. So I think that that might help with some of this excess width right here. If not, I can taper it in a little bit more, but we're a lot closer now. So now that I have this sleeve actually on, it's totally fine here in the upper arm. Like just, you know, no problem at all. It fits great. It is definitely too long. So I will have to take some of this out. Not a lot, but enough to have, I think I decided I was going with like a two and three eighths inch wide cuff. So enough to have that cuff because right now I could just finish this off as is and it would be long enough. So I need to take off probably about like two inches of the length and otherwise I am good to go. So I'm going to figure out that length here on the mock-up and then cut it out as the actual on the twill. So I have the pieces all cut out now for the sleeves. These are the cuffs right here. I decided not to interface them because I just don't want them to be that heavy and they are going to be folded over double and they have the line stitched on them anyway. That was the first thing that I did was I stitched the lines on. I measured, I think it was one and an eighth inch down this way for the edge of this one and then it was two and a quarter inches from here for the edge of this one and that kind of balanced them out. Remember that half an inch of this will be gone for the seam allowance. So that will look something like that when it's done so it's nice and even in the center. Then over here for the sleeve, what I've done is I've marked all these little dots here and basically this center dot, this is the center point of the sleeve, then we have one and a half inches out from there, one and an eighth inch here, which is a pleat. So this dot will go to this dot and then this will be stitched up about three inches up from the edge and like stitched all along the edge like that. And then same with over here, this dot will go to this dot and will be stitched up three inches from there. And that pleating system should make this the same width as this cuff. If it's not, I'll squidge it a little bit. So I will make sure that they meet before I probably do all of the stitching, just, you know, to be safe. Once the stitching is done, the rest of this will just get kind of released into the width of the sleeve. But once the stitching is done, then I can seam up the edges of the sleeve. And then up here I do put in a little bit of a gathering stitch. It's really just easing. There's like the tiniest bit of gathering in this sleeve just so that you can see it on Samantha. This is what I'm talking about. So you can see just that ease going into her shoulder as well. And you can see the pleats here also. So that's why her pleats are about as wide almost as this cuff. That's why I went for three inches. Half inch will be in the seam allowance and then it'll be two and a half inches above the cuff that will be pleated down like that. I am not however doing the Velcro in the cuff because mine can fit over my wrist. So now I'm gonna put everything together. So this is what it looks like with the sleeve all pleated up and stitched down. And then this is what it looks like when the sleeve is complete or just about. I still have to do the hand sewing of the inside of the cuff. It's pinned in place right now, but otherwise all of the pleats are stitched down. It's put into the cuff, it's folded over, pressed, etc. So this one, it does have a little wobble because it just wound up being wider on this side than this side, but I think it's fine. It'll be on the inside of the hand anyway, so I'm not too worried about how it's matching. I haven't even checked here. Yeah, probably about the same thing on this one. But 
anyway, it's looking pretty good. I realized that when I was doing the mock-up, I didn't actually try to put the patch on the sleeve. And because I still, I won't know until I put it on what that patch looks like or where it should go or even how big it will be. I am actually going to wait and do the patch like after I fully have the sleeves on. I'm sure it'll be harder to put on, but you know what? At least I'll be able to see what it looks like. So I have finished the sleeves other than the patch, putting on the patch, and it's too hot to put that on though. So I am going to attempt to do Samantha's hat. Now Samantha's hat is a Tam style hat and it's made up of two pieces plus a band. So we have an outer piece, an under piece right here, and then this band, which hers I think is actually just ribbon. And I might do that, but I might also just do like an actual fabric band, we'll see. So I went and I like, held my measuring tape, my flexi measuring tape that I've showed you before, I held that around my head to try and get what I thought would be a good dimension. And then I added a half inch seam allowance. And then that was this circle right here. So now I'm cutting the inner circle and I have already cut the outside. And I found out that with my head measurement plus the wig on, and then minus a half inch seam allowance, so basically my head measurement would be like out to here and then minus half inch here, I'm getting this for what I have to cut away, but that leaves me with only, this would wind up being one and a half inches wide after the seam allowances are taken out. And I feel like that's super, super narrow. Like hers is practically one and a half inches wide. Uh, yeah, hers is one and a quarter inches wide. So I feel like for my head that that's gonna be too small. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to cut out another pair, or another set, but I think maybe I'll still give it a try and see what this looks like on mine. I could always do a smaller seam allowance on the outside too. I could try like maybe a quarter inch. Samantha's just has a very small seam allowance in here. It's really just surged. And then there is top stitching from the outside that it's really, it's, I don't know, it's kind of top stitching. It's top stitching just through this side, like it's not on this side over here. So I guess they would have opened it up and then stitched down the seam allowance like this. So yeah, I could do that. I probably will do that. And then again, the band, I might do a piece of grow grain or I might do fabric. This isn't grow grain. I know it's black, so it's not really showing up at all. It's not grow grain, but I don't know what it is. It is more like a ribbon than it is fabric. To be honest, I feel like it's the type of material that like grocery bags are made out of, but this long predates when people use grocery bags. So I don't know. So yeah, it is definitely too small around. I think that the inner circle is actually the right size because this does still have some room and that's good because I'll be wearing a wig. But yeah, I think the thing is that I forgot to take into account the fact that it does kind of like come over your head too. So I need to add in like the slope with that. But I'm kind of thinking for it to be like the same scale as Samantha's, maybe like out to here, because I feel like, yeah, Samantha's just comes out a lot farther. So what is that? Like maybe an inch plus on each side, I think. So of course my seam isn't even out there, but it definitely, okay, now my seam is on the fold. Yeah, maybe I'll try an inch and I can always cut down from there if that's too big, but I think that that will be a little closer. So I'll give that a go, but at least it's the right gist. Okay, so switching gears back to the dress for a second, I think that this is a good location for the patch, but honestly, I'm having a hard time deciding. I feel like Samantha's is maybe a little bit farther down her sleeve, but I also wonder if I did make mine just a tiny bit too big. So just for comparison's sake, here is hers and here is mine. Now, obviously my sleeve, is a lot bigger as well but it does seem like i don't know it's i don't know maybe the level's okay actually is it just that it's too big maybe i don't really feel like redoing it not that it's hard it's a 15 minute stitch out and if i redid it i could do the applique bit and have that do it um, it's just like resetting at my machine, which only takes like five minutes. So it's, again, not a big deal. I just can't tell if it is too big or not. Like, I just can't tell. I, I haven't really been doing the scaling thing on this project like I have on others like Kirsten or her cloak. I've just been kind of eyeballing it. 
And I feel like maybe in relation to like the stripes and stuff, mine is large. Yeah, maybe I should try to make one that's just a little bit smaller and see how that goes. I can't even remember how big this one was. I think I did this three inches. So maybe just like half an inch smaller and try it with the patch outline and see if that's any better. While I have this on though, I'm also going to go ahead and take measurements for how big the little neck inset needs to be. It's gonna go up to here where my fingers are because I don't want it to be too far up my neck. Hers is like all the way up. I don't want it that far up. So I think here is good. And this should also allow me plenty of room to put the anchor in right there. I think that'll be good. So yeah, I have to take the measurements of how tall this needs to be, allowing for a little bit of overlap, and how wide, again, allowing for overlap, both for like finishing the edges, which I might just do surged, or I might fully encase it probably, and then I'll have snaps on both sides that affix it in place. So I have figured out the size here, and basically what this is, is the size of the gap that it needs to fill in, plus a half inch for overlap on the sides and the bottom, plus a half inch all the way around for seam allowance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch all along the outsides, leaving a little gap probably about right here on the side to turn it. And then this is right sides together, by the way, there's cotton sateen on the back. And then I am going to turn it all right sides out, you know, clip all my corners and curves and stuff first. And that will give me the inset. And then I'll put some snaps on the side of this and on the side of the neckline and put the anchor on and I'll be done. This is what the neck fill-in piece looks like. It doesn't have snaps or anything yet, but it has the anchor applied to it. And I've marked where the top snaps go on both sides. So I can just put those on and the others and that will be all great. I'll do that tomorrow. And I am going to go ahead and try a smaller version of this tomorrow as well. And I'm also gonna do the hat, but that's it for tonight. So I decided to go ahead and actually do the whole scale thing of like, how big is this compared to her arm? How big would mine be compared to my arm? And I found out that my patch is actually a little bit small. So I'm going to keep it as is. However, it's going to move down a little bit because I measured this portion of her sleeve as well. And it should be seven inches down from the top. Mine's like five and a half right now. So I'll move it a little lower and I will do a probably just a rolled hem around the corner with a serger, around the edges with the serger, and this will be the patch. I'm jumping all over the place with this, but I did finish the neckline insert. Looks like this has all of the snaps on there. It's five snaps on each side. It was a lot of hand sewing. And now I am moving on to the grommets in the back. I did decide that I do actually want to do grommets, despite the fact that Joann's doesn't carry white grommets, or at least their website says they don't. So what I've decided to do is paint mine with nail polish and my nail polish is really old and crappy but I did a test on one right here and although it did wind up losing a little bit of the paint when I actually like put the grommet in I was able to just touch it up and it was fine so I think that's a good look for it. Uh, the other <laughs> odd thing I guess is that these grommets I think the reason why I have this whole giant pack of grommets is because they're technically the wrong size for my grommet setter. I don't know where the other piece is I think it's under my dress but my grommet setter is a size zero zero I guess these must be a triple zero maybe because they're smaller but they do seem to work it doesn't give it like the super cleanest like I think you can tell that there's kind of two layers of texture there that it isn't because of the nail polish and uh yeah but I don't care because it's like a very small detail on the back right there so I think it'll be fine so I went and I played with the tapes on here just to see like how what sort of a distance I would want with each I think I am gonna have enough of the tape by the way to do a bow here so I'm very thankful for that and I'm really liking this is one and a half inches down from the top and then two inches between each I thought that was the best sorry my mom was calling so I thought the two inches was the best distance here though I might actually now that I'm looking at it I might try it with 1.75 I tried it with 1.5 it was too small I might try it with 1.75 and decide but then all I have to do is like this lip here basically this is what's going to have the grommet set in it so I'll make a little mark with my friction pen over here then I will use my awl to poke a hole through that mark and then I will use my grommet setter which this is the grommet setter that I have I've had this for a really long time I think it is CS something or other CS gob own oh, no, I can't read that word but that's the grommet setter that I use I don't have any fancy thing I just use a mallet to set the grommet and there's only six of these so it should go pretty quickly so I'm going to test out that 1.75 and then let's give that a go 
So first we poke the hole with the awl. I usually poke from both sides just to make sure it's nice and open. And then we set the pointy part of the grommet, the part that has the little tube on there, hopefully you can see that, from the outside. Sometimes it needs assistance getting through the hole. And then you put the disc side of the grommet on the back like that. And then you center it over the hole on the little post thing here. Put this part up top and hit it a few times with a mallet. And there's our grommet. And this is what that lace up section looks like when it is all done. So now that the lacing is all done, let's talk about this patch. So what I've done so far is I took where I had like repositioned it to here, I took it, I pinned it on, and I have stitched a small straight stitch right around a little bit in from the edges here, about a quarter inch in from the edges. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my little embroidery scissors and snip right up close to where that stitch line is. Sorry, it's the black on black, it's really hard to see, but stitch right up close to that. Then I'm going to do a satin stitch over the edge, stitch the patch down really with the satin stitch and finishing the edges. The patch is now on and with that the dress is done. Now granted this is a not a good way to put on a patch if you at all want it removable because then you'll have to pick out all of these satin stitches and also b it I do feel like it's not even. I'm not sure what happened there but like the point here is definitely lower than kind of the point here and this also looks a little uneven and I think it's just a matter of trying to squidge this through the sewing machine when it's already on the sleeve. If I had done it flat I'm sure it would have been better but you know what hers is also not even. So just for reference there's hers again totally not even so actually the fact that mine is also uneven, I think is almost a bonus. Oh, one other thing that I did yesterday that I forgot to mention is that I actually opened back up a lot of the stitching that I did on the sleeves here. So I had had it stitched down to, I think about here. And when I put it on, it was just too tight. So I opened that back up to about here. I think it's like an inch and a quarter up from the cuff now. It fits and looks so much better now. So now that the dress is done, it is time for take two of the hat. Now I cut out that larger size, like I said that I was going to earlier. I used an even larger crystal platter than I used the time before. Hopefully I never need anything larger than that because it's like the largest round thing that I have in my house. So I traced that out and I sewed it together with the bottom side that I had used the same inner circle as before, but the new size of the outer circle. I sewed it together, I put it on my head earlier, it seemed Okay, I didn't show you guys that. Sorry, I wasn't wearing makeup. So I went ahead and from that, I also did that other line of stitching right there. So basically, Samantha's hat, it does have a surged edge in there, but I had already put it together and I didn't feel like taking it apart and putting it together again. And I figured that that other line of stitching really does do a good job of like stitching down the edge right here. So there's almost like the seam allowance is, you know, contained, if you will. So I figured that that's going to be good enough. And hopefully, see the reason that I put this wig on is hopefully the inner circle is actually going to be the right size, even with the wig. And yeah, I look a little like a chef, but um, I think that that will, oh, it's slipping up. This hair is so slippery. But I think that that will work. I think I need to maybe trim my bangs a little more though. I just trimmed them. So if you see little hairs all over, that's why, because I just trimmed them. But now that I have this on, <laughs> that does not look very good as far as the bangs go. Her hat gets pushed down by her, or her bangs get pushed down by her hat as well. But now all I need to do is add the grow grain ribbon around the edge. And I think I'm just going to do it the same way that hers is, where like basically this edge right here is top stitched to the ribbon. So it will look something like that, basically. And then the ribbon will just be the edge. If it feels like it's not sturdy enough, I might do an inner ribbon as well and encase that because that'll give me a little bit more structure. But yeah, this is just black grow grain ribbon from Joann's. And then there will be a little bow that gets applied to the side here, just like that-ish. And then this project will be done. So let's go ahead and put this ribbon on. I think just having the one layer of the band is going to work just fine. So now it is time to add the little bow and then I'll be all done. 
So I've cut my bangs a little bit shorter, which hopefully will be enough. I've now got hairs all over my face, but hopefully that is a good length for me to twin with Samantha. So I'm gonna go ahead and get dressed and let's go to the beach. All right, I am all dressed and ready to head out the door. The one thing that I wanted to talk to you about first that I realized I didn't before is accessories. So I have my little midi whistle right here, just like Samantha does. In fact, mine is hardly any larger than hers. And it's just like a functional emergency whistle that you can get on Amazon. Probably should have, you know, I'll fix my bangs before I take the pictures and footage, I promise. But so that is that. It's just set on a little piece of cording. And I think it's a good length. It hits just about my waist, which is where hers hits as well. And the other thing is the shoes. I'm taking this off because it's pushing the bangs into my forehead at the moment. I'll put it back on. But the other thing is the shoes. Now, she has these gorgeous two-tone button boots. I unfortunately don't have anything like that. I do have ivory button boots, the Renoirs from American Duchess. They look like that. I, however, am not wearing them today because I am going to go to the beach, take pictures, and these are really freaking nice shoes and I don't want to ruin them. So instead for today, I'm going to wear my Phantasma. <laughs> my skirt's too narrow to do this. My Phantasma Victorian boots. I'll show you a picture right here. They're just from Amazon. They're actually my old ones too. So they're super beat up. So they should be good for the beach. I decided to do the black ones instead of the ivory ones that I have that are the same. I thought the black looked better. For Comic-Con, I will probably wear these or else I might make shorter spats. I do have white spats with black buttons for my Jane cosplay, but they were just too long and you completely lose my leg because they go up past the bottom of the skirt. So I think that's everything. Let's go out to the beach.
little recap on this project. Honestly, I am so, so thrilled with how this came out. That said, it is not a summer dress. Like it was pretty cool out at the beach, like about 70 degrees, and I was still pretty warm, particularly in the bangs area, which I know is not the dress, but I'm not used to having bangs. And I do think that I need to cut them shorter because they were just kind of all over the place under the hat. They definitely look better without the hat on. But overall, it was really fun though. Oh my gosh, I have never shot pictures, especially by myself, but maybe never shot pictures, period, in a place that had so many people. I am amazed that I was able to get a lot of shots or all my shots with no one because that park was hopping. It was a small beachside park I'd never been to before, but I think it worked out great for this shoot. It felt very Victorian because the house was Victorian from 1903 and also beachy. And so, yeah, I thought that it worked out just fine. Overall, I am so in love with this outfit. I cannot wait to wear it to Comic-Con. I did have one person realize what I was, by the way, so that was always, it's always good to have that validation, I guess. Of course, I did have my doll with me, so, you know, that does help. But I did have just a really fun time with this outfit. I mean, it was frankly an easy make. I appreciated that I got to do embroidery, which I don't get to do very often, and even digitizing, which I really don't get to do very often. And again, if you do want to purchase this design for yourself, it is in my Etsy store, so that is linked down in the description. But yeah, overall, I mean, I just love it. I think that the boots worked out fine. They were inobtrusive. I may wind up wearing them to Comic-Con as well, but I'm gonna, I think, try the Renoirs for Comic-Con or maybe even try like a Spats type situation. We'll see how that goes and what I have time for before Comic-Con next month. But yeah, I'm just like, I don't know, I'm so happy. These American Girl projects are bringing me so, so much joy. And I'm looking forward to doing my next one, hopefully in not too long with a whole different character. So anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this project and this video and that you're enjoying the American Girl content. If you are, let me know what is your favorite American Girl. If you're not familiar with American Girl, let me know that too down in the comments. But anyway, if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube now once a week with my sewing vlogs out every Tuesday, but I do post occasional videos also on Saturday and I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can also send me a super thanks here on YouTube. I'd also like to take this moment to thank all of my absolutely wonderful patrons, particularly those patrons at the Romantic Victorian and Edwardian level tiers, who are Sharon, Julie, Mirage, Audra, Emily, Jean, Kim, Linda, Maria, Sarah, Tiffany, Cherries, Denise, Liz, Elizabeth, Heather, Jesse, and Kimberly. Thank you all so, so much. You absolutely make it so that I can put all of this content out here on YouTube. I just absolutely thank you. And again, if you are interested in joining my Patreon, that link is down in the description below. Thank you all so much for joining me today, though, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!